Our movie today is a South Korean action thriller called Hard Hit, or Restricted Call, released in 2021. The film introduces us to our protagonist called Lee song gu and based on the way he dresses, and his car, it is clear he is an affluent man. In fact, song gu works as a trade bank branch manager in Busan. He makes thousands from the stock market and through Korean trades. He had an important meeting today, but it got postponed. He decides to spend some quality time with his kids and drive them around instead of the chauffeur. Songgu decides to drive his daughter Hyun to her important entrance exam, and his son Minjun to school. Hyun senses an odd odor emanating from the vehicle. Songgu is aware of it, but he doesn't pay much attention to it, because he is preoccupied with setting up his phone, in case he gets a work call. Songgu can hear a phone ringing inside the car as he is driving. Both the children's and his phones are silent. Song then discovers a weird phone with a blocked caller ID in his glove compartment. He hangs up the phone, assuming it was a spam call and that the chauffeur must have left it at home. He is surprised to see his wife and kids as the phone's background, though. Hyun recognized the image as coming from her mother, Yun Su's Facebook page. Back at home, Yun Su discovers a peculiar package at their front door and picks it up. The mystery phone rings again in the car and the caller warns Songgu that there is a bomb in the car, which would blow as soon as Songgu gets out. But Songgu dismisses the call, assuming it is a prank from one of his friends or a family member, and hangs up. When his car is low on gas, he goes to a self-service gas station, and just as he's about to get off his seat and leave the car, the phone rings again. This time, the caller manipulates Songgu by saying the weird smell coming out of his car is due to the powerful chemicals in the bomb. The explosive is actually placed directly under his seat, so moving will trigger an explosion. To make things worse, the caller also has access to remote detonation if needed. Upon hearing his children discussing, the caller also threatens their lives as well, further weakening Song's resolve. Songgu loses awareness of the fact that he is obstructing other customers at the petrol station. Songgu thus fills up his petrol tank by giving an employee additional money. Songgu feels the explosive after being instructed to check under his seat by the caller. The caller expressly demands $960,000. If not, he will activate the bomb. A portion has to be in cash and the remainder has to be sent to a bank account. Hyun notices that her dad has just passed her brother's school, so she reminds him. Songgu tries to make light of the situation and tells both of his kids to stay in the car, as Min Jun wants to leave. Songgu is forced by the caller to inform his children that the car contains a bomb, but he acts like it's his friend playing a game with him. The deputy manager calls just at that moment, to inform Song that he would not be able to attend the arranged meeting. Also, he received a call alerting him about a bomb in his car and asking for money. Songgu rushes to meet the deputy manager as a result. As Songgu arrives, he discovers the deputy manager pleading with his wife to remain in the car. Songgu also makes an effort to convince her. Both vehicles are blocking traffic and angering motorists, so Song decides to park his car on the side. Right then, the deputy manager's wife has had enough and calls their bluff. She descends from the car, and the bomb goes off. Songgu passes the flaming vehicle, in complete shock and disbelief. His daughter begins screaming as Min Jun has been injured by the explosion. Some shrapnel is lodged in his leg. So Songgu speeds to a hospital. But, the caller threatens him. He needs to make the necessary financial arrangements before taking his son to the hospital. Songgu is also required to pay his portion, because the deputy manager is no longer alive. Songgu persuades a few of his VIP clients to make deposits in his bank while he is idle. Songgu can't get out of the car, so the caller advises him to first make the cash payment, and have his wife make the delivery. He hesitantly notifies Yun Su about the situation over the phone. Songgu is able to calm his wife down and prevent her from contacting the police when she panics. He persuades her to go to the bank and withdraw the funds. As they look into the CCTV footage from the explosion, the police discover Songgu's car reversing as if he was aware the deputy manager's car was about to explode. Thus, he raises police suspicions. Songgu observes his wife exiting the cab with a different lady as he drives to the bank. The lady Yun Su came with observes Songgu when she enters the bank, so she calls him and orders him to leave. The lady becomes suspicious and alerts the neighboring security guard that she believes her wife is being forced or blackmailed into delivering cash. 
Yun-soo goes to an alley to deliver the package, as directed by the caller. She senses a guy observing her. As Song-gu quickly makes his way to the alley, he finds that a man has been punched to the ground by the cops. Nevertheless, they have the incorrect man in custody, so the caller chooses to blow up the explosives, but shockingly, a bomb at the building beside yun Su goes off, instead of the explosive in the car. To the caller's disappointment, yun Su is uninjured. The cops examine the explosion at the building and they observe Song's vehicle again. Song Gu is now being sought after by the police, who believe him to be the offender. Min Jun suddenly has numbness in his leg, from excessive blood loss. Song Gu responds by transferring as much cash as he can and pleading with the caller to allow him to take his injured son to the hospital. When Song Gu's transfer is short around 1 million yen, the caller refuses to allow him to transport his child to the hospital. The cops also surround the car and order Song Gu to exit. He would not let his kid lose his life as a result of his injuries, so he hangs up the phone and drives to a hospital, ignoring everyone and everything. When he attempts to drive around them, the cops follow him. The cops manage to encircle Songu at the seashore, with great difficulty. The caller phones him again in fury, because he hung up. As the police chief approaches the car, the caller forces Songu to admit that he planted the bomb and seized his children as hostages. As a result, the chief directs that the remainder of the police keep away from the vehicle and block it on all sides. He also deploys snipers to shoot Songu once the children have been safely removed from the car. The bomb disposal crew also arrives on the site, and the team leader approaches the car while wearing safety gear and carrying some supplies for them. Songu shows her the limited call in private, so she grabs an HT radio from her luggage and delivers it to Songu. He moves the HT radio closer to the phone in an attempt to persuade the caller to speak, but the caller responds with a text requesting that the HT radio be thrown out of the car. He reluctantly agrees. He hears the vehicle horn, because he believes the caller is nearby, and is monitoring him. Unexpectedly, he hears the horn via the phone, proving the notion. In an effort to speak with him, Songu searches among the throng for a suspicious person. The cops have broken off communication, so when the caller tries to describe an event that occurred six years ago, the phone gets disconnected. Once more, the team leader finds Songu, and queries him as to what is going on. Songu explains everything to her, and informs her that the bomber is probably nearby. She asks him to give her the phone, but he switches it and hands it to her, since he knows the caller would find a way to get in touch with him again. The team leader checks the car and determines there are only two explosives, one in each of the front seats, allowing the kids to be safely removed from the car. In the meantime, Min Jun passes out, and the cops take him to the hospital right away. As Hyun sees the snipers shooting for her father, she becomes more cautious. She refuses to leave her father, and sits in the front seat as the team leader attempts to pull her out of the car, accidentally arming the second bomb. The team leader is outraged when Hyun informs her about the snipers, and requests the police chief dispatch them. The father and daughter share a moment when he realizes how much his daughter cares for him. The chief, who is still on the defensive, explains that Song gave them the wrong phone. Yun Su listens to the news as it is announced that her husband has been working on bombs for a long time, and that the parcel that came earlier to their home is apparently laden with explosives. The police chief receives an alert that Song, Gu's brother has come, and wants to attempt to persuade him to let his daughter go. The people agree with it. Surprisingly, the person on the other end of the phone is Jean Wu, not his brother. Jean Wu raises suspicions in the team leader, so she gives the order to speak with the wife to get additional details. Song Gu works hard to persuade Jean Wu to free Haiyan. He removes Haiyan from the vehicle, commands Song Gu to unlock the dashboard, and then detonates a second bomb using a timer. Prior to the timer expiring, Jean Wu commands him to transmit the remaining funds. Moreover, he will hold Haiyan hostage until Song Gu transfers all the money and the criminal is secure. Also, Jean Wu cautions Haiyan that if she tells the police anything, she won't ever see her father again. Once Haiyan has been removed from the vehicle safely, Song Gu races past the police barricades and departs from the scene. Jean Wu has already left by the time Yun Su reveals that he is not Song's brother. Song Gu tries desperately to phone his clients and friends to plead for assistance, but nobody wants to get mixed up in the situation. He ultimately phones his wife and asks for assistance, after realizing he has no other options. 
Songu manages to transfer all the money the caller requested, but the police chase after him, and the team leader tells him to stop the vehicle, saying they are aware he's not the culprit. Just then, he gets a call from Jin Wu, who orders him to come to a location. On hearing it, Songu remembers how he was scamming many clients to benefit the bank. He did all those scams with the deputy manager and other C-suite members. After increasing profits extensively, he also got promoted. He has a flashback of leaving work as a woman comes to him, begging for his advice on what to do, since she has lost all her wealth with the bad investment Song has made for her. She says she owns a factory that will go under, and all her workers will be left penniless, but Song completely ignores her and drives away. When traveling with Hai In, Jin Wu receives a phone call in which he is asked how he managed to send a large sum of money to the victim group's savings book. Jin Wu quickly hangs up without responding properly. If her father did something wrong, Hai In, who has heard the call, apologizes to him on her father's behalf. As Song Gu approaches the place, he discovers several businesses that have gone bankrupt as a result of the scam. He discovers Hai In tied and taped up. He receives a call from Jin Wu who informs him that the money he took from him represents the total amount of money stolen from all of the victims by the bank. Jin Wu's wife is the lady he disregarded that day, and she decided to stop living after the fraud. To make things worse, she was also pregnant at that time. Song Gu sincerely acknowledges all of his wrongdoings and expresses his apologies to Jin Wu and his daughter. Then Jin Wu enters the vehicle and takes a seat next to him. Song Gu attempts to convince him to get out of the vehicle and live, by getting him to videotape his confession. But, Jin Wu begs him to drive, if he doesn't want to blow up in front of his daughter. They hear the cops calling out to Song Gu as they approach. Song Gu decides to accelerate and plunges into the water. The impact knocks Jin Wu out, but Song tries to help him. He stuffs a book into the seat, before jumping out of the car when he has no other options. When the cops spot Song Gu, they intervene to save him. After a while, we discover that Song Gu has admitted to his crime and stated at the press conference that he will support the victims, because he is the key piece of evidence against the bank. Song Gu receives a call from his superior, trying to dissuade him from testifying against the bank, but he simply hangs up and chooses to do the right thing, after causing so much suffering to so many people.